What's up guys, how you doing? Welcome to another video. So another little reaction video. Um, a lot of you guys seem to enjoy the first one I did, so look, I thought I'd do another one and we'll see how these go. Um, so we're actually watching a video today from the New York Giants uh, YouTube channel. And this is following along Matthew um, Swenson, who uh, was or maybe is, I'll be honest, I don't actually know if he still is, um, but the New York Giants team photographer. I thought this would be a cool video because it would be interesting to compare um, how someone like this, who's a team photographer, um, does the job versus someone like myself. I'm, I'm also a team photographer for um, a football team, a basketball team. So I thought it'd be interesting to see um, how kind of my process through a day compares with his process through a day um, shooting a very different sport like American football uh, in the NFL. So uh, we're going to check it out. As always, the original video is in the description below. Um, please make sure you go and check it out um, so you can watch it for yourself without my, my commentary over the top. Right, let's get into this. Let's have a look. Let's go. Hey, my name is Matt Swenson. I'm going to take you through a game day as a team photographer for the New York Giants. Right, we start off the day nice and early, head over to Duncan, get a nice coffee, get our energy up for the day, head over to the... Okay, I've got to jump straight in here. <laughs> 6.45 a.m. I don't know I don't know where this game is. It doesn't look like he's going to an away game. I didn't get the impression. Don't get me wrong, sometimes if, if I'm travelling away, like I, I live in the south of England, um, and before now I've had to go to shoot games away in like Manchester, um, Stoke, uh, Liverpool, places like that. And then I do leave early, early, early. But if he's just getting up that early just to go and shoot the game, like at the home stadium, which I think he is in this video, um, I don't know what time the kickoff is, but man, I wouldn't get there that early. I like to get there around 7.30 for a one o'clock kickoff. Make sure everything's packed. In. Okay, so getting there at 7.30 for a one o'clock kickoff. So he's getting there five and a half hours before kickoff. Um, honestly, no, I, I don't do that. So... As a general rule, um, depending on the type of event, I will get there. So, like, if I'm just, if I'm literally just there to shoot the action of the game, I'll probably get there an hour before would be the latest I would get there, maybe up to two hours before. If I'm doing some slightly different stuff that day, like maybe I'm getting players arrived to the event, then obviously I'll get there in whatever time allows me to do that. That might often be like two and a half hours before the event, something like that. Um, but as a general rule of thumb, just for a normal event, I'll probably get there somewhere like one and a half, two hours before the event. I'm working. There's the coffee. Pretty nice view when you walk in. Head over to the office. Open the camera case. Make sure everything's ready to go. Quick gear rundown. We got our 400 mil. Our go-to, the 7200, our three camera bodies, batteries, additional lenses, pack it up and let's head to the stadium. Cool. So, okay, so straight away. So one of the reasons why he's getting there earlier is he's doing um, a lot of he, a lot of the stuff um, that I would do like the night before, right? Like I'll check my gear the night before. I'll make sure it's charged. I'll clean it, all that sort of stuff. It looks like he's going to have a similar setup to me. There was a 400 mil there, a 7200. Looked like he was shooting cannon. Um, so yeah. The first thing up is player arrivals, which is about four hours before the game, so about nine o'clock. Make sure all our cameras are loaded up with memory cards, batteries. Wow, so players get there four hours before for an NFL game. They they don't do that for anything here really, like even like Premier League, not like two hours before maybe, something like that. We'll throw our lenses on here. Once we're all set, we'll clean up the lens caps and head outside. The first social media post of the day is the player arrivals. We like to get out there nice and early and make sure we can get all the players we can. As you can see, we're armed up and ready to go. First up in the distance, that's Riley Dixon, the punter. Get a nice low angle, make sure we get the full body. Everything moves super fast on game day, so we use a live transfer system to get these photos off to our digital and social teams so they can get them out to the fans as quick as possible. Next up, we'll head out to the field. Due to COVID safety protocols, we have a limited number of people on the field, so I'm going to set up a remote camera to capture the players running out of the tunnel. I'm going to use a friction arm here and aim it roughly around where the players will run out. I'm going to set up a wireless trigger as well, so I'll be able to take pictures from anywhere on the field without actually being in there. Here's a final look of that setup, and we'll come back to it later. Nice. So um, I've done a little bit of, of, of 
uh, work on remote cameras that I've done on the channel here, mostly like behind the goal remotes. I do one for basketball as well. But, you know, especially when you get to like top end of stuff like this, like the NFL, right? You can you can do so many different things with the remote cameras. Like it looks like you're setting this one up by the tunnel entrance, right? To get players coming out, which is, which is cool. There's so much you can do. By this time, the players are starting to take the field for shirts and shorts warm up. So here we go. We'll get a nice establishing shot of our tight end, Evan Ingram. I like to walk the field and try to find different and interesting shots. Being a team photographer is a lot like a tour photographer. You're shooting the same thing week by week, so you try to find new and interesting things. Well, yeah, it's a really interesting point, right? When you are a team photographer, you do feel like you're getting some of the same photos every time. So I try and do exactly the same as, as Matthew's doing here, especially when it comes to the warm-ups. Because I go out, you know, especially when it's, I'm um, like, he's got field access here, right? And um, I, I will get that with the basketball I do, for example. I get the court access. So especially with warm-ups, I will try and get like slightly different photos. You know, things like guys with their hoods up and their headphones over or something to do with um, shoes. You get lots of colourful shoes with basketball. Just some, some different stuff each time. Because if I'm just doing the same photos of a player warming up, shooting jump shots, it's um it feels a bit boring, you know, if you're doing the same images every time. Still trying to tell the story of the game. It was an overcast day, so... It was a great opportunity to shoot some black and white photos. It provided some nice lighting and opportunities. Black and white photos, yeah. So so when I'm doing team photography work, I'll try and get some black and white stuff in there. If I'm doing stuff for news media outlets that don't do black and white, mainly because as a general rule, they want colour images, like newspapers and stuff want colour images, not black and white. I would sometimes include some black and whites, but especially when I'm doing team stuff, especially if it's like for social media, things like that, then I will include um, black and white photos as I, as I go quite often. <laughs> Now it's time for the first team warm-up, shooting the running backs and tight ends huddle. And now it's game time. The players are about to run out. You can see that remote camera we set up earlier, ready to go. Here's some of the photos we got from that. Oh, that's cool. He's done it like from behind. That's quite good. It's the coin toss. One of our captains, Nate Ebner, is walking out. Now it's time to get off the field and get our equipment ready for the game. Here's one of the first plays of the game. Nick Mullins goes back. Our linebacker, Blake Martinez, comes in for the sack. Positioning is everything. Right now I'm on the 10-yard line on our side, but I'll move up and down, usually 30 or 40 yards ahead of the play. Or so you, you saw how he was low down there, right? Um, I talk about being low down. Now, I, I, I know from, from watching American football photographers will move around a lot more than we will when we're shooting like football or something like that um, because I guess they've got a bigger playing area and the different angles you get are so much more important. It's quite a different sport to shoot compared to football, soccer that I will shoot. Um, but still down low. So like I'll be on a stall or something. He was knelt down, but still the idea is that we're down low. You get that angle behind the play depending on offense defense i stagger myself from other team photographers so we can try to capture every angle to play the best we can and just like that it's all over it's time to head inside get these cards ingested start editing and tagging all these photos go through every single photo taken it's usually about two thousand so you can see he's he's using a few different programs, right? He's actually, what's that he's using there? It's Camera Raw. Okay, it's probably just part of his um his Photoshop setup. But in the background, um, is that photo mechanic he's got in the background? I can't tell. No, maybe that's Photoshop he's got there as well. Um, but anyway, it's a different um sort of set of um process you go through. He mentioned how he's he's tagging the photos, so I'll caption photos, um, which I I will do in Photo Mechanic, and then I'll go into Lightroom to actually do made it. You can do that in Photoshop too. That's just a preference thing. I I just prefer to use Lightroom. Maybe or more depending on the game and what happened. So I'll go through. I'll so his workflow is using Photoshop, um, where, whereas I I use Lightroom. Photos are used throughout the year for social, editorial, posters, graphics marketing and many other uses but most importantly it tells the story of the team for the 2020 seasons that, that's the other thing right when you're a team photographer you're not just photographing the, the news story like you are if you're shooting um for like an agency um so things like that thinking of photos that could be used in graphics and stuff like that is just as important sometimes i'll get given a specific spec of of stuff that's like for graphics or marketing but it's not just the action shots so it's important to spend the time and make sure every photo is looking as good as it can 
After all this, we upload the photos to our catalog, close the laptop, and call it a day. Thank you everybody for watching. Follow us on our social channels to see more exclusive behind the scenes content and we hope to see you in the next video. Cool, that was an interesting video, right? Um, it maybe would have been cool to see some more of the actual, like, during the game process. Like, um, you talked about sending images at the end. I don't know if you're sending images through the course of the game. I would assume so. I mean, I, I'm sending images right through the course of a game. So, you know, the team can use things for, like, updates on social media and stuff like that and have, have images ready to go at halftime and immediately at full time so they can, can put out a story about the game. I'm assuming he's doing that, but he didn't actually um, directly say if he was or not. So that would have been cool. Um, but otherwise, it was a really good video. Look, make sure you go check out the original so you can watch it through fully without me um, talking. If you're enjoying these little reaction videos, do me a favor. Let me know in the comments below. Um, hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Guys, in the meantime, thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next video.